I'm CK. Tonight we've got a module from Little Fish Audio, a manufacturer I haven't worked with before. It's their asymmetric distortion unit. Don't know what that means? Let's put it together, see how it goes together, and then see how it sounds. Hope you enjoy the video. Here's the bag. Pick this up from thonk.co.uk where I get most of my modules. Again, I've never done anything from Little Fish Audio and I'm not sure what an asymmetric, asymmetric distortion is. We'll find out. QR code for a build document, so we'll take a look at that. Let's see first what the front panel and the circuit board look like. Okay, we've got Distortion, asymmetry, minus and plus, volume, mode, which I assume is a switch, soft and hard, in, and SYM period, which I'm assuming means symmetry, and out. So again, with a mono effect, uh, mono unit, symmetry will be interesting. Not sure what it means. And again... The board looks good. All through hole plated, the blue board. We've got pot, 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 switch, jack, 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 and other switch, just like we thought. Actually, that's I counted the switch twice. Sorry. Uh, power connector, a couple of circuit protection dialog dial couple of circuit protection diodes, a couple of caps, some more diodes, a couple of resistors, resistor, resistor, cap, diode, diode, a lot of diodes, one IC, and a number more resistors and capacitors. Looks pretty straightforward and probably going to be a pretty quick build. Let's see what we got. We got, got stuff. Set that aside to get the build dock. There's the power connector, it looks fine. And 1XTL072, that's an op amp, so the only uh, IC on the board is an op amp, so it's not doing the distortion itself. Knob, not a great knob, it's just press on. But that's okay. A couple of other little knobs. And the switch, it's not highest quality, but that's okay. Jacks, let me take the panel nuts off the jacks now. Should be a third one somewhere, shouldn't there be? There it is. Now, oh, I, did, I forgot to mention this. The Values of the components are not listed on the circuit board, however, on the individual plastic bags. You can see they're called out uh, by position number. Uh, one other thing that I didn't mention, but I should, is there does not seem to be any variable resistors, trimmer pots, or whatever. So what you see is what you get, just adjusted by the pots. So that's it. Again, pretty simple. Looks like a good second or third kit. So I'll get the soldering iron heated up, pull the build document up, and we'll get this thing put together. No particular surprises in the build document, except getting my iPad cable tangled up and everything. Stop it. Uh, just says put everything on the board. does have good pictures, which is always a plus, but again, this is a relatively simple build. Let me get things rearranged after the cable pulled everything around. Okay. So we'll start as typical in my build process with all the resistors. It's not just me. Most people do resistors first. And what we want to learn 
about resistors first, because it tells us about the board, is two things. How close to the body we have to bend the leads. Do we go right up against the body, or do we ha leave a little distance? I think we leave a little distance on this board. Let's see. No, I was wrong. We want to go all the way against the body with these. So put these 10K resistors in first. Flush against the body. I'll do this one. Grab a piece of solder over here. And we'll see how the solder flows on the board. As it should for a good quality board, you can see uh, the solder has wicked through the holes. So that means you're going to have a very conductive connection. You're not going to have to worry. Hold on, I'm going to move the garbage can. Uh, you're not going to have to worry about cold solder joints or incomplete soldering with these through hole plated boards. Now, uh, that's about all there is to say about resistors. So I will turn the volume down, put the video in fast playback, and you'll watch the resistors fly on the board because it's resistor time. Okay, that was all the resistors. Very quick and easy. Now we'll do the diodes. I'm going to do the uh, power conditioning diodes or power protection diodes first. For no other reason than that's what I want to do. And white stripe on the diode to the white stripe on the circuit board. Alternately, stripe side. This board is designed with stripe side or cathode side having a square solder pad. Oops, I could put that in backwards. And fortunately, I caught it. Because I have put diodes in backwards in, <clears throat> in the past. Unfortunately, that's one of the first things I check. So, I was able to troubleshoot my module not working very quickly. Now these are smaller diodes, the 40, standard 4148s. I think these are providing some of... Well, I'm not sure whether this is for the, the breakdown of the diode is... Ah, I'm not going to speculate. Never mind. We'll put it together, see how it sounds, and then figure it out from there. And again, these have black stripes on the glass body. And of course, you'll see these everywhere. Now we'll grab our bag O capacitors. I'm gonna actually Dump them in this parts tray. So first we've got, I think these are 22, 
take a ferret, but I'm not certain. No, 470 Pico, so that's uh, 471. So 47 is the value with 10, so that's 4700. Let's see, 6. We got another couple. I think these are the 22. No, these are 104s. They're very small 104s. That's interesting. C4 and C5. And you notice I cut the components loose from these paper and tape strips because uh, I find it a lot easier than trying to fight with pulling them out from beneath that tape. It's designed for machines to do it, not for people to do it. Let's see, now we've got two, what are these? 10 microfarad, 35 volt. Now these are polarized, and one thing you lose by not, by cutting them free of the card like that is you lose the long leg indicating positive, but you've still got the stripe indicating negative. So it's all good. And the shaded side is negative, and there is a little plus sign on the board to show you where the positive terminal goes. And different from diodes, the solder pad for the positive terminal is square in this case. Now we've got some, what we got? Some more 10 microfarads. Oh, but they're bipolar. Oh, okay, they don't care about their orientation. You can run current through both sides of it. Either direction. And I don't really have a preference when I put these in. I like the value to be visible from the side just for later troubleshooting. And now we'll put the little foil cap in. No doubt where that goes. Now we'll zap these all down. We'll grab another piece of solder. Now, where's the IC socket? Is the IC socket loose or in the bag? Okay, it's not loose, it's in the bag. Or a bag. And this is what's described as precision sockets with round uh, pinholes instead of square ones. Some people prefer those. I personally don't. I prefer uh, rectangular hole standard. Here we've got a unshielded or unshrouded pin header. So you have to pay attention to this indication on the circuit board about where the stripe is when you put the power connector in because there won't be a keyed shield guiding the connector in just one way. And to get this straight, I'm just going to solder one leg and I'll take a look at it. And it came out flat on the board and straight so I don't have to do any adjusting. And that, lads and lassies, is all the electrical components that are on the board. I'm not going to put the chip in right yet. We'll wait on that until I've finished with uh, the <clears throat> pots and jacks on the other side. So I'm going to pause the cameras to recycle them, and we'll finish this up. Let's see, are these pots all the same? B100, B100... Oh no, no, B10, they're all 10Ks. Never mind. 
Oh, and one A, because these the difference is how the resistor windings are done as to whether they're uh, linear, <coughs> excuse me, linear or audio taper. If you get that wrong accidentally, then uh, it's not that big a deal. You're, you're, the knob response will not necessarily be what you expect, but it normally doesn't cause any real problem. Just a little irritation. So the A10 pot goes in the RV Dist 1 side. And now, kind of look at it to see which one is which. Don't there we go. Okay, now we'll get the front panel again. You notice there are no, there's no LED indicators or otherwise on this board. Let's drop all this down. And I'm going to take one panel nut. We'll do the volume. Screw that down, a little more than finger tight. That holds everything together so we can solder all the rest. Uh, I will be futzing around with that switch. Let me switch over to the side of my solder pad with the holes. By the way, this solder pad, I made this from two-part silicon, high temperature rubber that I got from Amazon. It was surprisingly simple to do, even for someone like me who had never done it before. And there's a video showing how it was done on my channel, if you want to do that. Now, I'll put the op amp in. Notch. This doesn't have a notch, it has a dot, but that's the notch end. All the pins are in, no pins bent. Let's get the power cable. Red stripe goes on this side, as the circuit board indicates. Now we'll do the hard part for me, which is getting all the knobs with the index marks in roughly the same place. And there it is. All done. Half hour, 40 minutes. This is the front side. The back, the other side, the top, and the bottom. Now let's put it in the rack and see how distorted it sounds. In the test rack, let's fire it up. No smoke, always a good sign. Let me get my pointer, sorry for getting in front of the camera. So we're going to go uh, from the even VCO, frequency center, more VCAs, into the asymmetric distortion. Let's see what happens as we turn the distortion up. Oh, that's interesting.
you can hear a little bit of distortion. Let me tr let me change the symmetry. Now I'm going to switch over to hard. That's definitely more noticeable in hard mode. So there's some sweet spots in the symmetry. I'm going to hook the symmetry up to the LFO that I have lying around. Yeah, it's much better to have the much better to have the symmetry driven by uh, a waveform instead of just being a switch or knob position. Let me try a different waveform on this. I'll try a straight sign. Didn't like that as much as the triangle wave. Let's try a square wave. And then just an edge. Yeah, much better with the square wave or tri or even triangle wave. I'm going to put this through Oh, uh, now I'm going to trigger it. Uh, what am I doing? Oh, that's what I'm doing. I'm going to run the sequencer on this. See what that sounds like.
So that's it. Uh, obviously, or at least to my ear, it sounds much, uh, the best use is with the sequencer. I was getting a lot of uh, good distortion through there. Uh, individual notes held, not as much. So think about it that way. You want to use this in some moving uh, stuff, uh, distinct notes, not necessarily drones. Uh, the volume attenuation or gain that you get as you move the distortion knob up, I've seen this in some other effects units. It's not great because you're, you're having to constantly adjust your volumes. But it, you can live with it. Uh, just be prepared for it that if you're running a sequence and you want to change the distortion level, the volume level may go up, so you have to have your hand on your mixer uh, or your output board to drop it down again. Not a big deal, just something to be aware of. And as we saw, a very simple kit to assemble and has some interesting distortion when you're done. Feeding it from an LFO, primo. That's the way you want to do it. Hope you enjoyed the video.